Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this uh, episode, we're going to work on some more lofting for the Freedom 17 canoe. This is going to be a cedar strip built canoe, and we got the plans out of Ted Moore's book, uh, Canoe Craft. And so uh, there's several plans in that book. Uh, we built the Bob Special several years ago, and so anyway, I thought we'd take a crack at a, a longer boat, a 17-foot boat. I like the lines on it, and so anyway, we've been lofting the plans to create the station molds, which uh, we uh, did in the first video. So if you haven't watched that and you're interested, uh, go, go look for that. We'll link it in this video. And then uh, after we got done lofting the stations, I needed to loft the uh, ends where the stems for the bow and the stern will uh, be fitted. And so where the stations mount the length of the, the strong back perpendicular to the strong back, these uh, molds will be in line with the strong back and mount on the end station so they'll be like that. And it'll make more sense as we're doing it, but uh, I found it a bit confusing just trying to loft the, the end stations and I thought, you know, let's do some video on this because I think we could maybe help some people that are uh, trying to figure out how to do this. And I know that there are several uh, people out there right now building canoes and even some people that are in this same lofting process. So anyway, hopefully it'll be some good information uh, that you can use. Uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, please consider subscribing and we're going to, because we're going to do a, a whole series on this. We're going to uh, have multiple videos as we go through this build process. Uh, everything from getting it set up to doing the planking, the, the strip building, all the way through finishing it out. So we're very excited about it. Uh, if you want to get notifications when other videos are coming out, um, click the little bell down below. If it's on, maybe it's on that side. <laughs> I don't know. There's a little bell. If you click it, you'll get notifications when the next video comes out. So uh, anyway... Uh, let's jump in and see how we loft out the ends for this thing and uh, then transfer them off onto some plywood so hopefully we can get them set up on the strong back. All right, in the last video we did a bunch of uh, figuring on how to make all the different stations for the Freedom 17 and it seems like it should be simple enough but it really got a little confusing doing the bow ends, the, the stern and the bow stems. And so I wanted to just do a quick video on that. Um, on these, they only give you the water lines. So, and they say this is how far this is from either station one or station 15. Now you'll remember that there's a station 16 and a station zero, and those are actually, um, I guess, to be attached on the sides of our mold that we use to make the stems. And so there's no butt lines on these, it's just all water lines because these are basically facing out perpendicular to those station one. So we've got one here, the bow stem, and so that would be this first one up here. And it's pretty much the same process. You look at your water lines, which I've got drawn on here, and then you just measure out whatever distance it says. So on the two inch water line, it says, um, what does it say? One foot, five inches, one plus. So that would be 17 inches, one eighth plus. So two inch water line, come across. And there we are. 17 inches and not quite a quarter. And then you just plot the numbers on there just according to how, I mean, however many water lines there are and then you get all that. Now, it occurred to me that this, these are distances from the number one station, is what it says. So if it's gonna mount perpendicular to that, this water line basically is like the front facing of 
station one. And this will mount perpendicular to it. Now, what confused me was that um, it doesn't give you the profile. It doesn't tell you how tall it is. So I went and I got the profile off of the station one numbers and matched it up with what I'd already drawn out, 19 and an eight. So I put that on there and just, w these lines aren't fair. I just drew straight lines between points, but um, I figure that it has to come up like that. Now, the other thing that you'll see in some of the instructions is you gotta take three quarters of an inch off of these lines. So back it up three quarters of an inch because this, these lines represent to the outside of the inside stem. And so if we put a stem in the inside, they figure about three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna back these up three quarters of an inch all the way along here once we go to cut it out on the plywood. And that should allow us to have the stem on here that meets up to the profile at station one. Now the other thing I did is I thought, well now where's station zero go? And I figure it's about a foot out from station one. And the plan shows that it's about six inches from um, the end of the canoe. And so that works out about right. So you can see here, I even marked it on here uh, where I believe station zero would be. I marked it up at the top better. So anyway, we'll see how that works out. The other thing that it didn't show me, it said start here at water line two. There's no number below that to tell you where it is over here. So I marked it off at two inches, but with the way the, the shear will curve, even coming up from the station one up to station zero, you can see that it's, it's still, it shows curving down, but it's upside down, it'll be curving up. So I just ran that line on out and it came out close to one inch off the baseline. And it doesn't tell you any of that. The only thing that you can glean any information off of is this picture here where it shows you the stern and bow stations. And so it shows you where station zero is. And it shows you there's a four inch water line there. And then it shows you the very front of the canoe right here. And that goes almost all the way to the baseline, maybe within a half to three quarters of an inch of the baseline. So when I extend that line out, that's exactly what happens. It comes down to almost one inch off the baseline. And some of that's important because how we set this up on the strong back, we certainly don't want the strong back to impede with our strips that are coming down there. So we may raise this whole thing up just a little bit when we set it up. And honestly, I'm kind of thinking through all this in my head as I'm, as I'm talking about it. We'll put this video up and I will absolutely welcome some comments about this because um, there aren't a ton of instructions as far as how to do this. Um, we did, I just used the same paper on the other side, the stern one, and you got the similar thing going on. So on that one, it doesn't come quite as far down to the baseline. See, we've got station 16 marked there, and it looks like it comes in just, just short of three inches off the baseline at the back. And we know that the top of the stem at the back is definitely lower than, than the front. You can even see it on the plan. These stations on, on the left here are the after stations, and so you can see here that it's almost just a little bit higher than the four inch water line at the, the after stem. And if I just plot that line out, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm showing about three inches, a little better than three inches. So gotta be pretty close to that. All right, well, I hope, I hope we're doing this right and I hope it helps somebody. More as we get, get to a station set up. <laughs> okay, so what we got here is the bow stem. So this is the piece that we're going to cut out that's got to be perpendicular to station number one. And as we talked about a little bit ago, 
Station zero, I believe, is going to mount. We're going to have to cut it in two. It'll mount on both sides of this. So imagine station one is, is this way, and then this one's going to be this way. And then we build the stem up on the front of this, and then our strips will be coming in like this. Now, because we're going to have an inner stem, the measurements on the plan uh, are to the outside of the inner stem. And we're going to imagine that that's about three quarters of an inch thick. So we're going to pull this line back three quarters of an inch. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to tape this plan to the edge of this plywood. I ripped my plywood sheet in half, so it's 24 inches this way. My profile on this is about 19, and so I've got plenty of room. Now, part of the reason I'm doing this is because um, I want an extra two inches down here. And the reason is because the way I've got it figured, my shear line, the, the, the strips that are at the very top of the canoe on the sides are gonna come down all the way to here, and that's only gonna give me about an inch of clearance in the, in the front. And I'm just, I don't want my, my strips, my cedar strips, to be impeded by the strong back. So I'm gonna have this extra two inches. And so all of my plans will remain on the same size paper if I just push this all the way up to the edge here. Now I wanna pull it over, use mo the best use of the plywood. So I'm gonna try to get my widest part, which is down here at the bottom, clear over to the edge here so that I have plenty of plywood left back on the other part of this to use for other stations. So we got that marked there. Now we're gonna get this up here right to the edge. And that's pretty good. And I don't want this flopping around. So I'm gonna tape it. I'm gonna make my marks on here three quarters of an inch in and then we're just gonna go ahead and drive the nails in here. Oh, I'm gonna get some carbon paper. Just a minute. Just regular carbon paper. And what I'm doing is I'm putting these in here underneath the plan so that when I, when I draw or drive my nails in or whatever, I'll be able to tell where I'm at without having to pull the nails out and then put them back in the board to curve a bat around it. You'll see what I mean. And all you have to do is just get this carbon paper in the places where you're drawing. Actually, I'm gonna need it over here underneath this too. Put it underneath all of it. Okay, so we should we should be able to, let's see, how am I up there? Yeah, we're good. We should be able to draw anywhere on here we want and have it transfer directly onto the plywood. Okay, so uh, let's tape a little bit more here. Now, I got my pencil real sharp and I'm just gonna come in three quarters of an inch and make a few marks. Got this little sewing uh, measuring deal my wife had. It's got this little slide on it. It's kind of kind of handy. I've used this in a lot of boat building. I like it. So I'm just running it right up there to the three quarter inch mark and then just laying it down here and we'll just plot a few few dots and try to get ourselves three quarters. Now there's one of the marks of, of the lofting, so we obviously want to come in three quarters of an inch on that one. And there's one. Now I'm not gonna connect these dots like I did 
with this. The only reason I do that is just to see if it looks like it's right. Sometimes there's a mistake in the plan. And uh, so you can kind of tell, even when you plot it out, you can tell if it looks like it's going to be off. But once you connect those lines, you kind of get a visual idea of what it should look like, which is nice. I'm just going to drive nails in these little spots that I'm making. And uh, this is just going to be what it is, so I don't need to worry about that. So, so now we've got a line that's about three quarters of an inch, and that looks wide. Yeah, it's pretty close. Just an optical illusion, I guess. Okay, so now we're going to drive some nails in here, and then we'll be able to pull this off and see where we're at. Somebody on one of the Facebook groups is also making their stations, and they were having a hard time keeping a batten going around their nails. I've got this little flexible ruler. I've got it like at a, I don't know, Office Max, I think, and it's, it's bendable, and it holds its shape. Part of the problem, I think, with a batten sometimes is if it's very very wide or very thick and you go to bend it, it just puts too much stress on it, especially if it's a pretty sharp curve. And, and the result is sometimes you'll break a batten. Uh, this thing's 36 inches, so you know, you gotta move it around a little bit, but for the most part, it's really handy. Something else I'm going to say is oftentimes it's, it's really easy to get caught up in the sixteenths of inches and is it exactly right? And of course we want to get as accurate as we can and when you start working with sixteenths of inches you, it, it has a tendency to make you uh, try to be as accurate as you can. But then sometimes I think um, you just you just have to make sure that it looks right too. Okay, so this is a 12 inch line for station zero. Now I had 12 here, but I moved it up here and I don't know why. Uh, oh yeah, because it's right there. Okay, you know, I almost wish I had that nail moved over. I'm gonna just move it over. Okay. And I want some on this line over here. We know this is the baseline. So I can draw, I can even draw a line here. I think I want one here where I know where my shear is. I don't know if I'll need that or not, but I might. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this ruler right around here. See how easy that is? Now see, there's what I'm talking about. I don't have a fair curve right there. I'm gonna pull those out of there and just try to make it come in fair. That's better. Now I'm drawing it on here, but I'm hoping that it's coming through on that carbon paper. helps if you got a helper that can help hold these down for you while you're doing it. I've done enough of them that I'm kind of getting, getting self-sufficient here. Okay, let's bring that on down. Okay, now hopefully that's 
that's marked with that carbon paper on the inside of there. And I, that's a pretty decent, decent curve. I like it. Um, you know, once we get it cut out of the plywood, we're probably going to take a plane to it anyway and kind of smooth it out. Where's my straight edge? I moved everything off of this table to rip this plywood in half. Okay, here we go. Now this is just where I expect that cedar strip to go, that shear line strip. And I want to mark the this line here. Be easier if I still had that up there, but I can see the line and just copy on top of it. Okay. Well, I think I'm good with that. We'll see what happens. Rats, you know, I wanted to mark where station, station zero is. We can still do that. I haven't untaped it. Did I do that already? I don't know. Okay. We know back here is where station one is. Let's see. Okay. Now let's see, let's pull the tape off carefully. I do not want to wreck my lofting papers if I can keep them together. You know, if I would ever build this boat again, I've got them, if once the molds are good, you really probably wouldn't need these paper plans, but. All right, it's a moment of truth. Let's pull this up and look at it. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. Yeah, I can deal with that. That's going to be great. On some of the stations that I've already done this on, sometimes you'll get one where it just doesn't come through and you kind of got to draw it on in there, but that's good enough to where I can see what I'm doing. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so this is just barely pieced together, but now maybe we get a better idea of what's going on here. I've got station zero clamped on both sides of the stem mold, and then station one is back there perpendicular. And so this is not how this will be on this strong back because I'm going to have to relocate all these little brace pieces at the bottom. But you've got a center line there that this stem mold has to line up on. And then the, the bottom of uh, station one there will mount on the center line of the strong back down and likely screw into uh, a block just like that. And then this front part, because it's a 17 foot boat, it's actually gonna hang off of the front of the strong back just a little bit. I, I still question whether or not I need this station zero in here. It almost looks like more trouble than it's worth. Uh, but we got the measurements pretty good. We're three quarters of an inch down from the top of um, 
station one there, which allows for our stem to be bent and molded on there. We may trim that down just a little bit because uh, we're probably gonna flatten off the top of that just a little bit on station one. But hopefully that gives you an idea how you set that up. And then each successive station going back, and you can see we've got a few cut out back there already. And they get bigger and wider as it gets back toward the middle of the boat. I'm pleased. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.